Welcome to a video summary of the WeTech Play 2 Android Media Hub. You can read the full review from a link in the description or by clicking the card top right of the screen. This device runs an Analogic S912 processor, comes with 2GB of RAM and 8GB of built-in storage. At the time of review the UK price was around £108. The build quality of the Play 2 is perfectly reasonable, although there's nothing particularly special about the black plastic casing, which does have a propensity for attracting a lot of dust. There's a hard power button front left of the fascia, which doubles up as the power indicator light, illuminating blue when on. On the right hand side of the unit are a micro SD card slot and a USB 2.0 port, while the remaining connections are on the back panel. Those include a TOSLink digital audio out, an HDMI 2.0 port, a gigabit Ethernet connection, an all purpose 3.5mm AV out jack, and two further USB ports. Also at the rear is the terminal for the aerial cable or satellite connection along with an RF out to route the broadcast signals to other devices. The supply remote is a better than average build quality, although the directional keys are placed directly next to other heavily used buttons at the centre, meaning if you're not careful it's easy to hit the wrong one. It's not a deal breaker but the design decision seems strange. In the last major software update to the Play 2, we tech introduced a brand new launcher in an Android TV style lean back way. You get a story section at the top which is populated by your most recent used apps, feeds from certain installed apps, notably YouTube which seems to take up a lot of the screen real estate, and tutorials from WeTech on how to get most out of the device. Below the story you can place your favourite apps, while any remaining will be found in the app section right at the bottom of the launcher. Settings are accessed from a tab on the left, but it's not especially obvious this is the case and frankly they were easier to get at in the previous launcher. Fortunately you can still roll back the launcher by downloading from the bundled Aptwide App Store if you wish. One of the very handy apps the Play 2 includes is the Net Mounter, although it's been neutered somewhat since the last update, but it does still allow for operating system level mounting of SMB and NFS shares. In many ways the tuner functionality is the defining feature of the Play 2. After all you can pick up comparably blessed Android TV boxes in terms of media playback for similar money or less. Setup is reasonably straightforward and the Play 2 had no problem locking into all our available services, although it did pick up a lot of duplicate channels that needed to be manually deleted. The program guide itself takes a fair while to populate on first use but loads quickly thereafter. It's not the prettiest and if you want channel icons or logos it's a manual job to add them. The usability of the TV PVR functionality is also somewhat compromised by the fact that WeTac doesn't really describe the remote commands very well in its literature. The broadcast picture quality is certainly up there with the Humax UV box we use to compare, and we do like the fact you can record to network storage. You can also use a connected SD card or USB hard drive. All in all, it's a good effort from WeTac, but we don't really see it as a true replacement for a more dedicated device. The Amlogic chipset inside the WeTac Play 2 is highly capable when it comes to media playback. It's able to play 4K up to 60 frames per second, pass through HD audio formats and decode 10-bit HEVC. On the downside the Play 2 doesn't support frame pack 3D and nor is it compatible with HDR video in any format, so you might just want to take that into consideration. All in all the WeTech Play 2 is a very competent and well supported device with good firmware and some nice features. It's a shame that the TV PVR implementation isn't a bit slicker, but we still think it's worth an AV Forum's recommended award. Thanks for watching.